putting President Mugabe under house arrest. To bring you some sports news, so focusing on the budget, the sports ministry is to suffer a 30% cut in its annual allocation from next year. We'll bring you details. Thank you for joining us. Former finance minister said Techpre has lashed out at the Ecofad government for still borrowing despite assurances while in a position that they would not borrow for development when in government. Now, this is in spite of claims by the finance minister Ken Oforiata that the MPP government is borrowing into productive sectors of the economy. The former finance minister spoke to Francis Aban on our sister station Star FM this morning. The habit of borrowing and not paying down principal. It's one of the difficulties that the country has. We were told that there wasn't going to be any borrowing at all, that there was a magic wand to generate revenue. So why are we even borrowing? That should be another question. Why are we still borrowing? And the debt numbers are in September. The debt numbers, the CCT is in September. In fact, the media review tells us that as the end of March, it was 70.9 and it was expected to end the year at 70.1. It's nice to say as we speak, it is 68 percent. But are we headed for 70.1? Are we headed for something larger? You know, as a minority indicated, there was silence on that. You know, so I'm saying we are looking at September numbers and far back in August 20 or July when the media was presented and you see we were told it will be, it will end the year around 70.1. So right. are we headed for 70.1 or we are 68? Of course, it's an achievement to bring it down, mm. as I said, using the sinking fund. Perhaps the sinking fund, as I said, was used to in October. Of course, it's September. But are the sinking fund other buyback measures helping, you know, to reduce the debt? We are not too. And more from that exclusive interview, the former finance minister was commenting on the back of the presentation of the 2018 budget by the current minister, uh, Ken Oforiata, in parliament yesterday, and he predicted doom for Ghana's economy. Well, it's the very first year. We are now appreciating the policies. Mm. As I said, we are also just getting figures to analyze the implication. I just gave you an example, mm. uh, and, and it's on the basis of that that you are able to to come out with from the As I said, let me repeat, and sorry to disappoint, I, I do not want to, you know, speculate, but what I see going ahead is a tough fiscal, you know, situation ahead of the country. Okay. Scorecard on a level of 1 to 10, what would be your score for Ken kind of I don't have enough information to do that. <laughs> if you have a chance to go back into time, Mr. Seth Imano Tekwe, what would you have done differently as a finance, as finance minister? Well, you'll be surprised, you know, with my answer is to, I would have liked to give a little more time to my family. Really? Yes. You think the job took you very far away well, from family? Not just me, the talk you can ask in a, in a minister. Mm. It takes a lot, a lot of your time. And it's, it's not for, you know, but probably making a bit more time for family is, is you know, it's very, very, mm. you know, important in this job. Because, of course, uh, families also give you the... I mean, luckily for me, that's not to say that I've for, for, luckily for me, uh, family nuclear extended is 40 miles away. I'm able to go in and out. 
Now, that budget statement, the 2018 budget of the Kufuado government delivered by the finance minister, Ken Oforiata, has been described by a former deputy finance minister, Kesola Tofosin, as betrayal of the trust of Ghanaians, uh, the trust Ghanaians reposed in the government. Deputy uh, Minister uh, Kweku Kwating maintains the NPP-led administration is putting the economy back on track. This is a bad product that has been deceptively packaged. Right. Very bad product indeed. Why, why would you say it's a bad product? I say this because obviously if you look at the budget carefully, it is empty. Very empty. Capital expenditure is only 1.4% 1, 1, of GDP. Mm. Capital expenditure, 1.4% of GDP. Where are we going at this country? Where is Ghana heading to? I am surprised. The very first statement coming from the minister responsible for finance, he said that they have turned around the economy. Turned around the economy. I was thinking that an economy that has turned around, you would have gone ahead to remove certain sunset clauses, to remove the temporary taxes, but he rather decided to extend it. Is this an economy that has been turned around? We made a clear point that the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy, as the name will tell you, was introduced in 2013 when the economy experienced some setbacks right. for the purposes of stabilizing the economy and turning it around. Right. Obviously, there was a sunset clause then. And for your information, I brought it to Parliament. There were sunset clauses in the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy that said that by December, by December 2018, right. 2017, it should go away. Right. What are we saying? So your expectations are that by close yes. of the year, the plane this is If indeed you turn around the economy, the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy shouldn't have been extended. Right. If indeed you have turned around the economy, the special import levy shouldn't have been extended. Shouldn't have been extended right. for no reason. But let me make one important point here. We are in this country. Our brothers and sisters who are importers are complaining. Go to Abusokai. Go to the market women. They are saying that the duty levels and as a result of the new paperless system, you know what the paperless system has done? They have all of a sudden changed the valuation, valuation of goods and services that are already in the CS code. Okay. So what this has done is that they, they have gone through the back door to impose taxes right. on imports. So I was of the opinion that now that the sunset clause in the existing special import levy is clear that all these taxes will have to be removed, I was of the view that the government would have given some relief to the ordinary Ghanaian. That would grow the economy only for them to come and tell us today that they are standing it. I'm not happy about it. Right. I think it is not in a good faith. It is, we have a duty to the people of this country to ensure that any time we introduce a tax that is temporal, we obey we'll all, or we we'll go by it. We are happy. We've made business people happy. Ultimately, as business people begin to respond to these interventions and increase economic activity, the taxes they would pay would more than compensate for whatever losses we are having now. Now, the Institute of Fiscal Study says government must devise innovative ways of working in more revenue in the 2018 fiscal year. Senior Research Fellow at IFS, Dr. John Kwache, maintains improving funding sources of government uh, remains the surest way of ensuring that government realizes its ambitious programs. Government did not uh, generate enough revenue, but they have um, be able to keep to their expenditure. So they have operated within the budget deficit, right. which is which is good. Although it is hurting the economy in other ways, and they said that he is going to continue with the fiscal consolidation process. But you know, uh, an important plank of that is revenue generation. Right, revenue generation. So again, I was expecting the minister to indicate innovative new ways of generating revenue because this right. year they didn't do well. We have come out in Institute for Fiscal Studies with a list of revenue generating measures that we think government should consider. 
the minister mentioned some of them. The informal sector, although in some areas he did not provide enough detail, because this is, he said, uh, this is just the budget highlights. Right. But the informal sector, there's a lot that has, has to be done there. Leveraging right. on new modern technologies. Okay. Now, we, we also raised the issue of uh, concessions and incentives in the mining sector, the oil and gas sector, free zones, sectors, and we, we suggested that government can go back and look at all those incentives and concessions and see those which they can renegotiate downwards. We, we also raised the issue of the exemptions, and he also mentioned it. Right. Because this year they said they were going to make savings of one billion by reducing the exemptions. I don't think, he didn't say how much they realized in terms of that, but I don't think they came anywhere near that. So they need to... Now, junior high school education will receive a major boost if the 2018 Ejuma budget is a good measure. Government says it will absorb 100% for all registration fees of BEC candidates in the 2018-2019 academic year. Again, there will be provision of equipment to over 38,000 public schools, uh, while same number of teachers would be trained. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata announced that from next year, the Education Ministry will begin the infrastructural works towards the introduction of the basic science, technology, engineering and mathematics program in all basic schools. He explained that the initiative is intended to strengthen the foundational skills and generate interest in mathematics, science and technology. To this end, 10 well-equipped regional basic science, technology, engineering and mathematics centers. To improve the quality of basic education and equip the Ghanaian child with basic literacy, numeracy and critical thinking skills, the Ministry of Education commends the process for the review of the basic level curriculum to emphasize the four hours of reading, writing, arithmetic and creativity. Again in 2018, the Ministry will complete the curriculum reforms and define national pupil standards in literacy, numeracy and creativity. In addition, the Common National Assessment System will be implemented to measure pupil achievement against set benchmarks. In fulfillment of government's promise to make basic education free and ensure participation by all, the capitation grant was increased by 100% from 4 CDs 50 pesos per capita to 9 CDs in 2017. You're still watching Newsroom on GH1 TV. A warm welcome to our viewers joining us on DSTV via channel 361. Still staying on the 2018 budget statement, it was an atmosphere of misreactions at Mokola, a vibrant trading hub in the capital, Accra. Some of the women were optimistic government's promises would be fulfilled, while others thought it was business as usual. <laughs> We are working towards it. That's how many people did I say? Transportation. You know, I have to be a fool and so. So, fool, I call for more. I bought beer to me. I call some money. You know, this year, I get to work in camp. You know, you know, I say, I'm going to be a just in Yama. I'm going to be a man. I'm going to be a man. It was a charged market atmosphere. A lot of hustling and bustling as traders called out to potential customers. Majority were conscious that government was setting forth its fiscal policy, which would shape the outlook of the coming year. A section of the women were of the view that the budget would be translated into concrete, measurable outcomes. But the pessimistic ones thought it was same wolf in different shape skin. <laughs> Education. 
uh, allowance wa ma e say aka one this uh, one factory it a bomb pa say the uh, next year budget no free room no any money and the budget no all share we no deal to hono money wow i have free education but free education is time to add e kwala no be didi and then na ehia yes e best match just for fit they are much me so na am free na e ya juma no yes ya na deal to me ya pan well, in the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumasi, we've been speaking to some cold store operators, and they have welcomed the 13% reduction in electricity tariffs. They say they buy as much as 5,000 CDs uh, worth of power uh, to keep their cold stores running. Delivering the 2018 budget statement and economic policy on the floor of Parliament, Finance Minister Ken Ofriata announced a 13% cut in electricity tariff for both residential and commercial users. The Asafo Market cold store operators told GH1 News they buy as much as 5,000 Ghana cities to keep their cold rooms running. They believe the 13% reduction will come handy, although they were expecting a much higher reduction. If we are going to do something about this, then we are going to be very, very um, happy. Then the 13% reduction that they are going to give us is also going to somehow um, ease, ease the pressure that we are um, going to for us. Because We've got more for you right after this. Do stay with us. satisfaction that comes from hearing the real story from the horse's own mouth when a story breaks or is developing. There are many enterprises of life that the Nanado government will fail. This business is about fighting corruption. We should move it away from the corridors of parliament and confront the greater matter outside there. State of Affairs will be bringing you exactly that. We'll go eye to eye, face to face and head to head with the newsmakers at the heart of a story that is breaking or developing to unravel the intricate and minute details of the issues. State of Affairs, now showing this and every Tuesday and Thursday at 8.30pm with Nana Banamwa on GH1 TV. A lot goes on around us every day. Sometimes, traditional news outlets cannot capture it the very second it happens. But you have a phone that has a camera, so you have the power. Give us your account of the most depressing and interesting stories in your community. When it happens and you're there, you report it. 0551-433-055. When you see something, say something. Share it on 055-143. 3055 MTN Video Report Mondays and Thursdays on Newsroom in association with MTN everywhere you go when we celebrate we're not giving up for Nana Abba Anamwa 
TV Female Presenter of the Year 2016-2017 Nana Aba Anamwa GH1 TV TV Entertainment Show of the Year 2016-2017 The winner is Rhythm Live GH1 TV Station of the Year, 2016-2017. The award goes to GH1 Television. GH1 TV dedicates this award to you, our cherished viewers, for making us number one. You're welcome back. Now, 10 regional chairmen of the opposition National Democratic Congress have backed the candidature of John Germani Mahama for the election in 2020, even before the latter announces his decision. Now, these uh, chairmen, after a meeting last week, uh, issued a communique which they urged the former president to consider running for the 2020 polls. But speaking to GH1 News on the sidelines of the budget reading, on Wednesday, Aspio Gabra, who was also declared his intention to contest the party's primary, said he's unfazed. To ensure that it's a level playing field where party executives at all levels may have their personal preferences, but obey the rules of the game and follow the constitution of the party, which frowns on any elected party officer endorsing any candidate at any level. Right. Because the objective is to allow the members of the party to freely choose who their leaders shall be at the branch level, at the constituency level, at the regional level, at the national level. So any group of people who have been sending any documents using their party positions are only endangering their own positions in the party. If they intend to be re-elected, many of them have already lost a lot of votes in their respective regions. Right. If they don't want to stand again, and they are, this is just a way to get out and get somebody to incentivize them or compensate them, then that's their business. And we'll get more on this particular one. Uh, joining us via phone is the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, George Lawson. Mr. Lawson, thank you for joining us on GH1 TV. Thank you and good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, let, let's talk about this concern raised by Mr. Spio Gabra. It's not just him. Some other party members have said that these chairmen should be sanctioned of a sort. What do you think? That is your opinion. What we said, what I said earlier on uh, the earth, uh, what they did was was great, and that is that no one would need now. And again, for today, that's not also what we need. We should be talking about this uh, deceptive budget, budget full of deception, lies. That's what we should be talking about, not about this. Because as far as we're concerned, or I am concerned, we don't have aspirants in there because there's no context. Mm. You have aspirants. When there is a contest, we don't have a contest. For now, what we are facing and focused on is the reorganization of the party. But then, That's this the coming way. from uh, regional leadership of your party, of course, some aspirants like Mr. Spio Gabra uh, are worried. Yes. Don't you think it's a genuine concern? Please, we don't have aspirants. Aspirants, you have aspirants when there's a contest. There's no aspirants. But they have also declared their intention to contest. They, they, there's nothing at stake. And they contest what? Are you, what are we doing? There's nothing. There's nothing at stake. There's nothing what we are for this way. What's the reorganization? You have aspirants when you have open nomination or where, the, where there is something you are contesting. Then we are not contesting it. We are rather reorganizing the party. And after the reorganization, others will tell you. So we don't have aspirants. So that word aspirant, very soon we'll be having aspirants of uh, 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 MPs, 
and mm. it will destroy our hardworking uh, members of parliament. So please, that as far as should be, uh, should, should, should be buried. Because if we have aspirants of uh, MPs or aspirants or parliamentary mm -hmm. aspirants, mm -hmm. what would happen? So that, 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 that word must be mm. uh, to be mentioned. So we need to talk about reorganization. Mr. Lawson, if, if I understand what you are saying, if I may, if I understand you, as it stands now, you haven't even opened up for people to file, uh, to contest yet. So for no, no, other executives... We are not contesting for anything. There's nothing being contested. Yes, I get that. I get that. You have contested for something, you have an Which you haven't done yet. For now, mm -hmm. what we are faced with is reorganization. So everybody must be focused. Talk about reorganization and not the now. And these are members of NEC. So are we saying that, okay, so wake up tomorrow and a national executive will also sort of ask another person to contest? Is that allowed? Yeah, they have made, they, they, they have made. For me, we have all the, um, the right to talk or meet any, any member of the party. But or for them to issue a statement after having a private discussion with a member of our party, I think it's misplaced. What we expect from them if they are issuing a statement that must be issued should be uh, 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 updating us mm. on the reorganization in the various regions. So uh, for now, let us talk about reorganization. I, I understand that you want us to talk about the reorganization that the NDC is, is embarking on. But we have uh, your chairman not talking about that, but rather encouraging a candidate, somebody to contest. They are encouraging. And we said, I said... Don't you they, think that will are, corrupt the people at the grassroots what, level? What, 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 when they talk of corruption, uh, that, that, that amount to corruption... Their minds, I mean. I mean in what this contest. That's part of we have condemned what we have. I have condemned it. But what it did was not what we need. What we need now is update on the reorganization of the various regions. But for you to go further and talk of corruption, well, corrupting their minds, I mean, because if you have a leader, if you, you have a leader encouraging you, to, uh, somebody to contest, you don't, you don't corrupt uh -huh. anything. When it comes to the corruption, they please take the word corrupt out. So I'm so talking, Mr. Lawson. They Somebody's have, mind to, can be corrupted. I'm not referring to uh, corruption uh, uh, in, in, uh, in monetary uh, value. What no, I'm saying I, is I that... I understand the English guy. Okay, okay. So let's mo country. make progress. There's no corrupt, corruption in uh -huh. this country. Yes. yes. There not, well, if you even use the word police, I wouldn't even allow that. Not corruption. Not the word corruption. Please. That's English. So for you... What they have done, what it cannot mean, influence. It is, it is not what we, we, we need now. Mm -hmm. The act is misplaced. All members must be focused also not to speak on this uh, issue. They should rather talk about corrupt, uh, the, the reorganization, not uh, 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 what the 10 chairman did. That is it. It's misplaced. That call was misplaced. And the former president, and leader also said it. But it's, 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 it's premature. Mm. And even with that, the former president has not declared his intent. They are calling to yes, he is heading and kept it. He never said the word. He has not declared his intention. So as far as he is the former leader, even he's not an aspirant. All right. He's not an aspirant. If when they all become aspirants, then we treat them equally. The mm. former president is not as far as, and as, far, as far as we are concerned. And we don't have any aspirants. So people should not call them. Because very soon, they are creating problems for the party. Very soon, the people will also uh, start calling themselves uh, uh, um, parliamentary activists. Mm. They need to affect parliamentary work. Uh, and so, uh, Mr. Lawson, before, before, before you leave us, what, what would you have to say to the likes of Mrs. Pio Gabra who are commenting on this? For now, what I want to talk about is a budget. Okay. It's a budget that I would want to talk about. Uh, like, we'll... like, for instance, we talk of uh, uh, they are going to construct a road from Plaza to Tamale. Mm -hmm. you know, that road is ongoing. I, I, I use that road in December. It's almost there. Near completion. So, we are, those are the things we need to be talking about. 
Okay, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll make time and then have a conversation with you on the concerns thank you, you, you have much. about uh, the 2018 mm. budget. But thank you very much. Uh, George Lawson My is the Deputy uh, General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress. Let's move on. Police in the Ashanti region have arrested a 20-year-old uh, Da Costa Ousutaya for stealing and raping his, victim, his victims. The suspect reportedly presents himself to unsuspecting female victims as a pastor of God's Salvation Church situated at Inyinesu, a town before Tepa in the Ahafwa North District of the Ashanti region. The suspect tells his victims that he has prophecies about them and that they are spiritually married. He then visits their homes, prepares a concoction mixed with four or more diazepam tablets known as Blue Blue for them to drink for spiritual cleansing. This makes his unsuspecting female victims weak for him to rape them, steal their personal belongings and later flee. A sum of 150 CDs, a mobile phone, a charger and a Bluetooth speaker were found at Da Costa's residence after a victim alerted the police about his activities. One of the victims of the self-styled pastor narrates her ordeal to GH1 News under condition of anonymity. If so, we be so I won't mean breathe. So you breathe through your mouth. Just I want no more dear now. Sana we breathe. Sana deno kwaye. Until we no more better. I couldn't do anything. I was very weak. And I'm a tall mad. Until from then, the course would be hard. The regional command is asking victims and other people who know the suspect to assist the Mancraso police in investigations. Assistant Superintendent of Police Juliana Obing is Ashanti Regional Public Relations Officer of the Ghana Police Service. The command believes there are other persons or other women who have fallen victims to his activities by the confession that he gave to us during interrogation. The command is therefore using victims uh, urgent victims or persons who know any victim or victims to go to the Mankran, so District Police Command to assist in investigations for prompt prosecution. Suspect, however, was taken to court on Monday, the 13th of November, and has since been remanded into police custody to reappear on Tuesday, the 21st of November, 2017. The suspect has since been remanded. In other news, the National Communications Authority has shut down a radio station operating illegally in Dansuman here in Accra. Radio Dam was allegedly broadcasting on 104.9, uh, that's the frequency, and officials of the NC and some personnel from the police service stormed their premises on Wednesday and shut it down after they became aware of the station's illegal operations. The action by the NCA comes after some 131 radio stations were sanctioned early this year for various offenses. Now, in a statement, the NCA said the station violated Section 31 of the Electronic Communications Act 2008 Act 775 uh, that say, states that except as otherwise provided under this act, a person shall not operate a public electronic communications service or network or provide a voice telephony service without an authorization granted by the authority. Now, there's a perception that premature babies have mental disorders. But is this always the case? What health dangers are premature babies and mothers exposed to? In the following report, William Evans Income spent some time at the neonatal intensive care unit of the La General Hospital and has come through with us. I scrapped down as I walked into the neonatal intensive care unit of the La General Hospital. This was to prevent taking any infections into the sterile unit. The memories of these incubator twins will linger in my mind. They are three weeks old and born before the 37 gestational period. Okay. Preterm babies lack body fat and sometimes cannot keep themselves warm without help. The incubator primarily helps them regulate temperature. The survival of the preterm depends on a multifactorial intervention and this includes the incubator. 
Dr. Abe, the head of pediatric unit, leaves no stone unturned when it comes to medical attention for these infants. She has already received some 135 premature babies out of 426 deliveries between January and October this year at her unit. There are different reasons why that baby will come out before that baby before that baby's time or before that baby is fully mature, that is before the 37 completed weeks of pregnancy. And um, one of that, or one of the many reasons may be, we'll say, maternal. So the mother may have certain um, diseases, okay? So sometimes mother may have pregnancy-induced hypertension, a complication of that called eclampsia, for example. Then that baby's, that mother's life is at risk, and then that baby may be in distress. So then we as clinicians or the obstetrician will have to go in and get the baby out. Fragile as they appear, they are prone to infections, and so maximum care is given. Nurses here are to handle the babies with extra care, and it is non-negotiable. Preterm babies matter for Kate as a result of certain acts by the mother during pregnancy, and Dr. Abbey explains. Sometimes some mothers too are using hard drugs, okay, so illicit drugs. Those can also contribute to that baby being born premature. A majority of the time, even though they are maternal conditions, it's not the mother's will for the baby to be born premature. But like I said, the mother may have a chronic illness, may have eclampsia, which is your, the blood pressure going so high that now the mother may now start to fit, so that baby has to be taken out. Some of these babies may even have cognitive defects depending on the kind of injury that they get within their brain, then they may have certain long-term cognitive problems or behavioral problems. Dina, who just delivered preterm twins, is intermittently asked to keep up the kangaroo method, an alternative to the incubator. This is my first time of giving birth, so when the doctor said you have to pray to me, I'll just take it like that and then. My baby came, so they didn't tell me anything again. The world marks premature day on Friday 17, and the focus is protecting the preterm infant against infections. You're watching Newsroom. We've got sports and international law coming up. Do stay with us. Twenty fourteen, Osu couldn't contain us. Twenty fifteen got bigger from the trade fair. Last year, the Cross Sports Stadium got us covered with thrilling moments. Shaq, where are you? Are you ready to be part of the hysteria with a galaxy of GH stars like never before? Day, first December 2017. Venue GA 8662 Time 6 p.m. Shaq. S concert. The neon edition is here. S concert. A night with a real star.
from government now the figures for the reduction in the youth and sports ministry's uh, spending are yet to be known. However, government has indicated it will be pursuing uh, the creation of a national... Some people are saying that thing that maybe he's not a human being or whatever. I can't train my way. It's known to me. Who am I giving to? I have to take care of him. Catch the full report on how a 24-year-old is locked up with ducks being kept by his parents. The price he has to pay for being struck by an unknown condition. Monday, November 20th, news tonight at 6.30 p.m.